like I said, one of the coolest things I've ever done. All right, well, it's beach and pool season here on the First Coast, so we need a good read, right? And that's when we bring in Rona Brindley, uh, the owner of Bookmark in Neptune Beach, or the Bookmark, I should say. That's okay. um, and you always bring great recommendations. So it's nice to see you. Welcome back. Well, it's nice to be back live. Thank yeah. You. Oh my gosh, so exciting. I know. I was like, have you been here when it was live? In the yeah, past? but it's like, been yeah, a while, so, so, so it's exciting. Very exciting. So you've got several books for us here. Oh, First, we're going to just... start with. Uh, the Spectacular? What is that There's about? just something for everyone. Fiona Davis does this wonderful job. She picks an iconic building in New York City and she writes a story about it in the past and in the present. And there's always a mystery. And this time it's Radio City Music Hall oh, and the Rockettes. Yes. And so you get some sense. It's true that there was a bomber haunting the city in the 1950s really? for about over 10, 15 years, and he did target Radio City a couple of times, huh. and so that's part of the mystery of the story. Okay. And then you get this wonderful sense of the Rockettes. I don't know about you, but I remember as a kid going the dancing Easter eggs and all the wonderful things. I've always wanted to see How them. they all kick at the same yes, level, beautiful. and you learn how hard they work, and if you kick out, like you kick one extra kick, you get, that's a fireable offense, so you've got okay. to be counting Lots in your head. Pressure there. So there's a great mystery, some great history about that, some smiles, and a wonderful twist and happy ending. Ooh, history mystery, I like it. Yes, just All right, perfect so for next anybody. Next is The First Lady. The First Ladies. This is another historical fiction, but earlier, the 1920s and 30s, and the First Ladies are Eleanor Roosevelt, who was mm -hmm. the First Lady, married to FDR, and Mary uh, McLeod Bethune, who was dubbed the First Lady of the Struggle. She was an educator and a civil rights activist, mm -hmm. and the two became one wonderful friends and um Bethune really convinced Roosevelt that she needed to help her with civil rights and to talk her husband into working on anti-lynching to mm -hmm. get rid of the bias oh, yeah. in the military and right. work for all these things. And FDR wasn't keen on doing it, but she had a lot of sway. So it's their friendship and that time period and leading up to the Depression and World War II. So you get a different time period in this wonderful women's friendship and power. Okay, what about Be Mine? Uh, Richard Ford, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning author. And this is about Frank Bascom. It's the fifth novel about Bascom, but if you haven't read those, you're still okay mm -hmm. and he's just the everyman and it's the world through his lens he's been a sports writer a husband a realtor and now he's in the unfortunate position of taking care of a dying son so it's how the two of them come together but okay. he does it with a sense of humor and his writing is so exquisite you know you just get swept into the story it's wonderful all right what yeah. about the housekeeper oh this is a good mystery this is a woman and she's been unceremoniously fired she thought from a very wealthy household and so she wants revenge so she gets a ragtag group of women who've also been fired and a night of a big ball in this fancy house Ooh. they're going to go in and they're going to steal everything from the rugs oh. to the ceiling to the chandeliers the books the <laughs> art everything they're going to get everything they're going to sell it and make a lot of money and that's how they're going to get their revenge and what could possibly go wrong oh i'm sure a lot what about <laughs> speak of the devil here another revenge story this is seven women around a table it starts off and in the middle is a pillow case you take it off and there's the head a severed head of a man oh wow well. and and they would all say that he was a man who deserved killing they all had reasons to kill him and they all hated <laughs> oh him gosh. and they all claim that they're innocent and they didn't do it oh my well that's uh that's going to be an interesting <laughs> one right there what about the art thief so now we're into nonfiction. the art thief is fascinating mostly you think of people stealing art to get money this mm -hmm. is a man who for over 10 years pulled off 200 heists 300 objects of art two billion dollars wow and he didn't sell any of them. He didn't make any money. He just oh wanted gosh. to be surrounded by beauty. He put them in the attic in his mother's house, and he would just sit there and enjoy. Wow. As he said, he was an art collector with a sort of unorthodox way of collecting. Yeah. That's so interesting. But he got caught. Oh. Well, you'll have to find <laughs> out what happens next. All right, last but not least, the philosophy of walking. Okay, literally the putting one foot in front of another. But this is about how different people and philosophers and thinkers have used walking either to think and figure things out right. or to not think and take a break. Everybody yeah. from Thoreau to Nietzsche to Gandhi. Mm -hmm. And think about what you do when you walk. Do you walk fast? Are you going somewhere? Are you on a march or in a parade? And what do you use walking for? So it's sort of a fascinating philosophy of walking. Oh, well, you're a wealth of knowledge. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Rona. And let me ask you this. Have you ever been to Ida Claire? No, I want to find out, though. Well, yeah, if you're craving delicious southern comfort food,